This is Miss Igo. Welcome to my classroom. We're going to talk about solving linear equations with decimals. This is actually the second part to my video about solving linear equations. Now we're going to add some things. We're going to add equations with decimals and we're also going to talk about solving equations with fractions. When solving equations with decimals, we're going to follow the same rules that we did when we were solving just regular linear equations. The only thing is we're going to try to get rid of the decimals as soon as we can. But before we get rid of the decimals, what we have to do is get rid of the parentheses. So remember that was the first rule when we were solving linear equations is to get rid of the parentheses. And so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to get rid of the parentheses by distributing. So I'm going to distribute this one tenth into the parentheses. All right, so I'm going to recopy this down. And when I distribute that one tenth, I get one tenth x minus three tenths equals one and one tenth. Okay, so now I want to get rid of the decimals. And the way that we get rid of decimals in an equation is we move the decimals, all of the decimals, the number of spaces to the right that the, the term with the most decimals has. So what I mean by that is if we look at each one of these terms, this first term has one, two decimal places. This one has one decimal, this has one decimal, and this has one decimal. So the most number of decimal places is this first term, and that's two decimal places. So to get rid of the decimals in the equation, we have to do the same thing to every term, and that's move the decimal two places to the right in every term. So in the first term, if we move the decimal two places to the right, that's going to give us 25x. In the next term, if I move the decimal two places to the right, well, there's only one decimal place. So if I move the decimal again, I'm going to have to fill in that space with a zero. So that would give me 10x minus, again, I'm going to have to fill in with a zero. So that would be 30 equals, if I move this two decimals to the right, I would get 110. Now all of the decimals are gone and we have a regular linear equation. So remember the next thing that we need to do is combine like terms that are on the same side of the equation. And I do have like terms right here. 25x plus 10x would be 35x minus 30 equals 110. Now I want to isolate the variable, so I'm going to start with what's farthest away, or I can say that I'm adding or subtracting first. Um, so this is a, a minus 30, so I'm going to do the opposite and add 30, and I have to do that to both sides of the equation. And that leaves me with 35x equals 140. And then the last step is to divide both sides by 35. And that gives me x equals 4. Okay, let's try another equation with decimals. And remember the first step is to get rid of any parentheses. So I see some parentheses right here. I have 12 hundredths. And so I'm going to distribute that into the parentheses. And so when I multiply 12 hundredths times x, I get 12 hundredths x minus, I'm going to multiply the 12 hundredths times 6, and I get 72 hundredths. And then I'm going to bring down the rest of my equation. Okay, so now we want to move our decimal um, to the right, the most number of decimal places in the equation. So in the first term, there's two decimal places. This has two decimal places, two decimal places, two decimal places, and one decimal place. Okay, so we're going to move it the most number of decimal places, which would be two decimal places, to the right. 
when I move um, this first term, the decimal two places to the right, I get 12x. In the next term, I get 72. The third term, I get 6x equals, this would be 8x. And in the last term, I get a negative. Again, if I move it two places to the right and I don't have a term, I'm going to fill in the space with a zero. So that would give me a 70. My next step is to combine like terms. So these two that are on the same side of the equation. So the 12x and the 6x are on the same side of the equation. When I combine those, I get 18x minus 72 equals 8x minus 70. At this point, it doesn't matter what we move. I'm going to move the 8x. Since it's a positive 8x, I'm going to subtract 8x, and I have to do it to the like term on the other side of the equation. And that gives me a 10x minus 72 equals a negative 70. Now I want to isolate the variable, so I need to move the um, negative 72 over to the other side by adding 72. So I have 10x equals 2 divide by 10 and that leaves me with x equals anytime I have a fraction I need to simplify or reduce my fraction and uh, 2 is the biggest number that will divide into 2 and 10 so if I divide 2 by 2 I get 1 10 divided by 2 would be 5 and so my answer is 1 fifth Okay, we're going to move on to the next section, which is solving linear equations with fractions. When I have an equation that looks like this, where I have a single term equals a single term, all I want to do is isolate that variable. And to isolate the variable, I just need to undo whatever is connected to the variable, or I need to get rid of the coefficient of that variable. Well, the coefficient of the variable is a negative two-thirds. To undo that, or to turn this into a 1, because I want it to be a 1x or x, I need to multiply by the reciprocal. If you're wondering why we're multiplying, the, the negative two-thirds is being multiplied times the x, and the opposite of that would be to divide. But we can't divide a fraction by a fraction. Instead, we multiply by its reciprocal. So the reciprocal just means to flip the fraction or take the multiplicative inverse. So if I flip the fraction, I get a negative 3 over 2. And remember, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do the same thing to the other side of the equation. So let me show you why we do this. Remember, we're trying to make this cancel out or turn into a 1. Well, if I, if I do that, if I multiply by the reciprocal, a negative times a negative is a positive. 3 times 2 is 6, and 2 times 3 is also 6. So that gives me a 6 over 6x, six which is the same thing as 1x. So this is x. And then when I multiply a whole number times a fraction, I can turn that whole number into a fraction by putting it over 1. And then I multiply apply the numerator times the numerator, the denominator times the denominator. I'm multiplying a positive times a negative, so that's negative. 6 times 3 is 18. And then 1 times 2 is 2. If I reduce this fraction, I would get a negative 9, or 9 over 1. And that's my solution. Now, when I have multiple fractions in an equation, I want to get rid of the fractions, and I can do that by multiplying everything in the equation by the LCD, which is the least common denominator. So the first thing we have to do is determine what the LCD is. And the way that we do that is we uh, look at the largest denominator. In this case, it would be a 4. and Sometimes that largest denominator will be the least common denominator. 
And the way we determine whether it is or not is all the other denominators have to be able to divide into that denominator evenly. Well, 2 can divide into 4 evenly, but 3 cannot. So we take that largest denominator and multiply it times 2. If I multiply 4 times 2, I get 8. 2 can divide into 8, but 3 can't. So I'm going to have to do it again. 4 times 3 would be 12. Okay, 12 can divide, I mean, 2 can divide into 12, and 3 can also divide into 12. And of course, we know 4 can divide into 12 because we got it by multiplying it times 3. So my least common denominator is 12. So now I want to multiply every term by the least common denominator. There are three terms in this equation, so I'm going to multiply every one of them times 12. And when we do this, even if we have a term that's not a fraction, we also have to multiply it by the least common denominator. Now, instead of multiplying it out and then reducing, we're going to reduce first. So what I'm multiplying by, I'm going to see if it will reduce with my denominator. 4 will go into 12 three times. So that leaves me with 3 times 3x. Okay, and the next term, 2 will go into 12 six times. So this leaves me with a negative 1 times 6. And in the last term, 3 will go into 12 four times. So I'm left with 1 times 4. So now, if you'll notice, I have no more fractions left. If you still have fractions left, then you did not multiply by the least common denominator. So that means we have a linear equation, and we're going to solve it just like we would any linear equation. If I multiply 3 times 3x, that gives me 9x. And then negative 1 times 6, that's minus 6, equals 1 times 4, which is 4. Now I want to isolate the variable. So to do that, I'm going to add 6 to both sides. And I have 9x equals 10. And my last step would be to divide by 9. And that leaves me with x equals 10 over 9. Um, there's no number that will go into 9 and 10 besides 1. So this fraction will not reduce. And this is my solution. Here we have another equation with fractions. So the first step is to find the least common denominator, the LCD. So like I said before, we look at the biggest denominator. In this case, it's 4. And then we have to see if the other denominators will divide evenly into that denominator. Well, the only other denominator is 2, and it will divide evenly into 4. So 4 would be my least common denominator. Now I have to multiply 4 times every term in the equation. Well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 terms here. So I'm going to multiply every term, remember I said even if it's not a fraction, by 4. In the first term, 2 will go into 4 two times. So I'm left with 5 times 2 minus, I have the 1 times 4 equals the x times 4 plus 4 will go into 4 one time. They cancel each other out, so I'm left with a 1. Okay, 5 times 2, that's 10, minus 4 equals 4x plus 1. Now I have a linear equation with no fractions. I'm going to combine any like terms that I have on the same side of the equation. 10 minus 4 is 6. Now I want to isolate the variable. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And I get 5 equals 4. Divide both sides by 4. And my solution is x equals 5 over 4. Again, we have a fraction that won't reduce. So that's my solution. Here we have our last example. Our first step is to find the least common denominator. My largest denominator is 6. And my 
my only different denominator is 3, and 3 will divide evenly into 6. So my LCD, again, um, would be 6. So we're multiplying every term by 6. In the numerators, we have binomials, and I like to put parentheses around my binomials any time I see them because that reminds me that they're stuck together. So now if I multiply every term by the LCD, in the first term, 3 will go into 6 two times. So I'm left with 2, and it has to get multiplied times the whole numerator, which is a binomial. So I'm going to end up having to distribute. So keep that binomial in parentheses to remind me that the 2 has to go to all of those terms. In the next term, the 6 is cancel, so all that's left is the x plus 5. <laughs> And then in the last term, again, the 6 is cancel, so I'm left with plus x minus 3. If, for example, this uh, sign in between these two terms, if that were a minus, even if these the numerator and the denominator canceled, uh, the LCD and the denominator canceled, if this term were a negative sign, I would need to distribute that negative to both of those terms in the numerator. But that's not the case here. So, we're going to continue. The thing that needs to be distributed is this 2. So, I'm going to distribute it to both of these terms, and I get 8x plus 2. And now, I need to combine like terms. Well, I have a couple of like terms on the right side here. I have x's, and I have a plus 5 and a minus 3. Okay, so let me bring down the x plus 2. Now, x plus x would be 2x, and a positive 5 minus 3 would be plus 2. So now I want to get my x's together and my constants together. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides of the equation. Again, we're at this point where it didn't matter. You could have, have moved any of those terms, and it would be okay. 8x minus 2x is 6x plus 2 equals 2. Now I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, and I get 6x equals 0. When I divide both sides by 6, I get x equals 0, because 0 divided by anything is 0. And that's my solution.